Hello, President Chartrand. Hello, it's good to see you're finally back to work. I know, right? <laughs> Slacking. Can't take a week off, you're missed right away. That's a good sign. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, let me start off with some birthdays. Move those out of my out of my uh, report. Okay. Um, so we'll start off with happy birthday to Asia. Uh, we're celebrating in not the country of Asia. Her name is Asia. She's celebrating her birthday today on Saturday, May 27th. Asia is the daughter of uh, Donna Osford. Um, she's a Gimli local. Gimli is actually a new local, so Gimli local chair. Nice. And the mother of the future president, Skyler Nutson. I think I'm saying it right. K N U T S O N, Skyler. You're going to have to, gonna have to teach people your last name. Nutson, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's not nuts. Nutson. Nutson. Yeah. yeah, she's going to be the next president. I she's heard about old. her. Yeah, so she's got, she's gunning for my job, she said. So. I love it. Next Another 15 years, she said she'll be ready. So <laughs> she, she doesn't miss meetings either. She comes to meetings. So that's good great. To see that. Happy birthday is also going to Cecil Scott, who's from Portage, who was here at the treaty consultation. Brandon celebrating her 80th birthday. Ooh. And there's 80, 80 years old, and she's still at the meeting. So <laughs> this tells you the energy of our people. They don't give up. And that's one of the things that is our motto. I think, uh, Métis, we don't give up. And uh, we also have a happy 88th birthday going to Elder John Lee, who's celebrating his birthday on Friday, June 2nd. Oh, happy uh, birthday. Yeah, yeah, and John's still always uh, all over the place and looks uh, way younger than he looks, his age. Yeah. Uh, uh, really, John is in good shape. Uh, happy 71st birthday is going to Teresa Dinoye, uh, Leanne's Dinoye's mom. So, of course, Leanne has been with us uh, for as long as I've been there, so a hell of a long time. So, so good to see uh, so many birthdays and... Uh, I'm probably missing a lot more. Uh, uh, I don't see any more uh, coming from uh, CAC here as past week papers. Uh, I do have congratulations going out to Reverend Métis Citizen Kim Dudick, who is a teacher at Murdoch McKay Collegiate and is one of the two teachers who received the Bank of Canada Museum's second annual award for excellence in teaching economics. So Kim runs an Indigenous academic achievement class, and she takes out students and teaches them about trading posts, crafts, and selling, and culture items, and how to support... Uh, uh, vision of economics to sell these products and increase a business sales. So uh, good for her. She each winner receives a thousand a gift basket for the items for their class. So good kudos to all the students and of course to Kim Dudik for achieving and receiving that award. Um, here of course I'm in Brandon right now in a packed house in Brandon. Trust me, the packed house. You have no room to put any more people in. And um, Lee, of course, the uh, vice president has been here. Uh, since uh, you you can go back three decades, she's been the vice president, and she's definitely proud to see so many people come out. Uh, uh, like I said, they had to get a bigger hall. They couldn't use it in traditional Southwest Regional Hall. It's not big enough. Right. And uh, the people are coming in droves. You just heard an 80-year-old, even though it's her birthday, she's out at a treaty meeting. So, <laughs> so it's uh, really good to see so many uh, uh, energ energetic and proud uh, Métis citizens here at the treaty uh, consultations here in Brandon. Uh, that's happening throughout the day. We have youth also in, uh, brought in uh, for us, but tomorrow we have veterans and elders uh, consultation. That'll be my last consultation. Mm -hmm. And then next weekend, of course, the big meeting, June 3rd and 4th, yeah. uh, where we vote and we set the stage for the next phase, which will get uh, three readings from Parliament in the fall. In the fall, of course, the Minister, Prime Minister, one of them will be coming into our assembly uh, to sign the first modern day. Métis Treaty since 1870. Of course, everybody knows that we were negotiating the treaty. Uh, it's a well-documented well, uh, statement made by Johnny McDonald in Parliament. We're treating with the half-breeds. So there's a negotiation because we, of course, took military action to protect the Northwest. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are truly the only people um, who had the ability and the force to take on uh, Canada, Upper Canada. So we had to actually uh, negotiate a thousands of the British troops to come and fight us. So uh, otherwise, Canada was uh, quite concerned how they would tackle the Métis, the buffalo hunters, the prairies, and definitely someone to reckon with. So so they didn't want to take a chance to need the British troops uh, to come in and fight us. And, of course, uh, uh, the treaty, that they, they did not fulfill that treaty. Uh, the land, of, for example, was never given to the children, and uh, 1.4 million acres of land. And, of course, the, the remaining parts of river lost to our parents uh, in fact, it was pushed very vigorously by Ariel at the time, too, to, to commence uh, negotiating treaties for the First Nations. And Treaty 1 comes in 1871, and uh, something we're proud of, because we work closely with the First Nations. Uh, we're more connected to our First Nations cousins than, than non-Indigenous. So 
So we're not based in you know, what's important is people understand we're not based on the blood quantum. We're not a race-based nation. We're a, a nation built with a history, a culture, a language, uh, a community. So it's very clear. Uh, we have our own um, premise of our own positions of who we are. Uh, we take a strong position protecting ourselves and mm-hmm. keeping a very uh, solid position. Remember what Charlie McDonald, you know, the vision was they'd get rid of the Métis. We wouldn't exist after in the future. So remember after in 1885, we disappear in history at least 50 years. We are still around, of course. We're scattered in different parts of the Northwest. But at the end of the day, our families are still strong, still hiding their identity because there was a, a reason of terror happening to the Métis. And it was a hell uh, to be uh, found that you were a Métis citizen if the orange men were around. And uh, people paid a, a very, very big price for that. So sometimes their lives, women paid a big price uh, too because they were abused and uh, sexually abused by the, by the orange men. And, and that was... Uh, unbelievable that nobody lifts a finger in this country to say it was wrong. So, again, our history is one of a tremendous uh, uh, stand to defend who we are, uh, protect who we are, but we always worked uh, in partnership with the First Nations, supporting the First Nations when they needed us, and they would support us when we needed them. One Arrow, for example, joined us in the, in the, in the battle, uh, and that's something we have a lot of respect for. One Arrow was actually buried beside Miguel until he's... Uh, body was taken up and taken back to his uh, reserve. So, so it goes to show that uh, we stood side by side when we needed to and, and we recognize each other's territory and respect uh, each other's territory. So that's uh, something that we, we uh, continue to evolve here in Manitoba into the prairies. We see in Ontario what's happening out there. We do not support the Métis Nation of Ontario. We believe that they're fraud. Uh, we believe the people they're bringing in uh, is, uh, is, is not Métis citizens. They're on a race issue. We're talking about mixed blood, uh, and, and I agree with the First Nations that those are First Nation people. Mm-hmm. There's any connection with the Algonquin people. Uh, they're not Métis. These are not uh, citizens. They have no historical connection to them whatsoever, and they never were part of this history and the struggle as we were in the 1700s and 1800s to keep our culture and identity alive. So, again, it's something that's uh, we're based on nationhood. They're based on race, and uh, that's two different uh, ideologies, and and clearly, from their perspective, they believe anybody with mixed blood can become Métis. They let them become Métis. So we do not believe in that. You've got to come from the families of the historic uh, Métis community uh, that existed in the prairie. So, again, uh, that's just a quick historical snapshot. Some of the stuff we spoke of this morning at the treaty, educating our people about how important it is to, to uh, reflect the history uh, of where our people uh, were and where we are today. So we've come a hell of a long way. We've waited a long time over 200 years to get where we are, and, and we're hoping that as we move forward, it'll just be the beginning of change for the next generation. That, uh, And I said today, we can't use guns no more to defend ourselves in the prairies to defend our position in Canada. We have to use what is now the new weapon is education. And so we need to invest more and more to our kids at universities, get them to be lawyers and, and one-day judges and people that make a, uh, politicians or, or business owners, all varying sectors of life, uh, entrepreneurs, hardworking people, mm-hmm. having strong families. If we get that, then that'll be our weapon to fight to keep on de- defending who we are. So we don't only have to defend ourselves against governments. We've got to defend against these uh, identities coming from the East and, and trying to come in and take away our rights and definitely our culture. So it's something that, uh, as I said, the MMF has always been the protector of the West, and we'll continue to protect uh, our red from 18, no matter where they live. And remember, we don't have no boundaries no more, so our people can join and become citizens to our government no matter where you live. We've gotten people from um, uh, the United States. Uh, we actually have a person uh, from Austria uh, the other day who joined us. Wow. Uh, so most of Austria is working out in Austria. Uh-huh. But they got their citizenship card, and they joined us uh, by Zoom uh, at the virtual meeting. So, so it just shows you our people are proud to be Métis and proud to be some one came from Oregon. Uh, so... Very proud to be the Métis of the Red River, and they always want to stay connected to their family and their community. So um, I had a good meeting with Mark Miller. He was in town. We went for dinner and uh, spent a couple hours together, and we went through a lot of the agenda items. One of them, of course, the treaty. Uh, we're making sure that it's going through any little hill or little uh, check mark that needs to be crossed or clearance needs to be more clarified on a particular word. We're, so, we're, we're like 99.9%. There's just one little hiccup, I believe. That's there, that's coming from the Privy Council. And that'll be, again, uh, uh, clearly fixed up in the next little while. 
uh, every word means something, and uh, we got to watch that uh, they uh, do not try to change anything in this agreement, which they can't. Most of it has been all agreed to already. So, so again, it's just a finalization, and, and then we're off to the races. Uh, as I said, at that time, September, they'll come. We'll gladify June 3rd and 4th. Uh, and, and the people, I asked the people here today, every hand went up. They're all coming to the assembly as, as the thousands and thousands of others that are coming from across the homeland and across Manitoba. They're all coming to the assembly. Uh, we're going to be walking in Winnipeg. Uh, and you, you'll see one of the things that's interesting, I mean, to our non-Indigenous friends uh, out there, I hope you listen and talk to the non-Indigenous society. You think they'd be proud uh, in Winnipeg. The mayor would be flying the flag, would be bragging the economy is going to be uplifted in Winnipeg. We're going to have thousands and thousands and thousands of maybe coming to Winnipeg uh, to actually come to a conference, hotel rooms, restaurants, gas stations, stores, and people will just be packing that, spending millions of dollars in that weekend. Mm-hmm. And there's not even a talk about it, no write-up. But look at the paper sometimes, you'll reflect it. Uh, when you have different uh, non-Indigenous society coming in here, oh, all of a sudden the economy is going to be booming, the hotels are going to be busting, you know, and everybody's going to be happy and smiling. And we're coming by thousands and thousands, and there's not even a write-up in the free press, you know? So it just shows you, again, how they look at Indigenous people uh, and still in a negative way. They don't see us as a economy, investors. Uh, it, it's just sad, you know. So they see us as social problems, not economy investors. And yet we're big economy investors, First Nation and AT. That's so again, right. it, just, uh, it just shows you, again, the context of uh, we still got a lot of change to make. And one of the things in the media for short communication of expending, expend, extending that message that, we, too, have money in our pockets. We, too, are going to be spending. We, too, are going to buy gas. We're going to pay for hotel rooms. We're going to pay for this. We're going to buy that. So it just, just shows you. But oh, it shows you our work is not done is a better way of saying it. Yeah. So, Definitely. going back, uh, then, uh, Will Goodon is, uh, is proud. Uh, is sharing this. Of course, he's from this region. Mm-hmm. And can be prouder to see such a, a packed house, uh, the biggest he said he's seen in, in all the years. And same thing with uh, John Surrey. His dad was one of the founders uh, of the Federation 1967, two bodies not here uh, to be with us because uh, I said I spoke of him this morning. He had been smiling from year to year uh, he was here to, to join us uh, and, uh, uh, and and to tell us exactly uh, what uh, things are like now, given the fact that. Uh, okay, give me a second. I'm trying to get somebody to give me a time here. Anyway, so uh, they, I'm showing my wrist. They're looking around in the sky and the back got doors. Lots of time. <laughs> and, and I'm all asking, show me your time and your watch. It's all I'm asking them. <laughs> and I can't stop talking. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll go back. George, George Forrest has been proud as he was here uh, alive today to see this, and he almost made it. And uh, But these dreams, like Senator Head and all the rest of those past leaders, you know, that all of them had dreams and aspirations and were a time in, in our history where we're seeing change coming uh, to the future. So I think all the past presidents and, you know, good and bad, we had some, some challenging ones, but we also had some damn good presidents, and uh, I thank them all, uh, whether good and bad, that we all played a role in keeping the Federation's memory and message alive, and today we're going to reap those benefits. And as I said, uh, this is a dream I have pursued now for 26 years, and we're about to make uh, history. So that's something I'm, I'm so proud of, and as I said, John Curry was proud, and so was uh, John, um, George Murray's kids that are here today. They're all old now, but they're not kids no more. They're all adults. Mm-hmm, uh, but right. it's good to see. Yeah, it's good to see that. Um, but there's others, so many others that played as Don McIver from the North, you know. You look at all, even Bill Flamont from NCI. He was a vice president one time, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at all these past leaders, Yvonne Dumont. You look at many of them. They were, they were leaders in the past, and they played a role. And at the end of the day, it pans out to where we are today, and for the last 26 years, our cabinet has worked diligently, nonstop, united. We stayed united, and that's something that's driven us to, to be on our, our, our own imaginations to finally to get uh, a better place. So Miller and I also spoke about land claims. You hear me talk about that a lot more because the prime minister said he will settle it this claim, uh, this claim, this term. And that term, of course, according to the agreement he has with the NDP, is to stay in power until 2025 before the next election. So, of course, like any other politicians, I watch watch the uh, news and watch what the messages are coming from political parties. And I, I too, worry like anybody else. We've got to get these things done before election is called. Mm-hmm. And uh, if election is called rapidly, we can find that everything we've worked on has, comes to an end and we have to start all over again. So, so it's very important that we get these things settled sooner than later. And these are some of the key things I expressed to Miller 
that land claim needs to be settled. We need to get that negotiation, you know, basically to completion as quickly as possible. So we, we already laid the value of the claim to him. Uh, we had a, a study done, and it took over a year to do the study. And so that's been given to him according to the Prime Minister. Uh, so then we talked about, again, a national. Um, same thing with uh, Ontario is always a drawing card for uh, us to be concerned about because they keep on bringing in all these race-based people, and they're going to try to go to court on matters. You, know, you see Alberta's in court again. Yeah. Right? Some citizens, they took them to court again. Uh, Winch Speaker's got some stories on it uh, where they're in global, I believe, and where, again, the locals are challenging their MNA because they didn't consult. They don't consult their people. They think you just do whatever you want. I don't know what world they live in, where they, how things have changed, but in the Métis government here in Manitoba, we consult and consult and consult, and we never stop consulting. Because you, you, you need to have your people walking side beside you, not behind you. Yeah. So, so consultation is so vital. And we push Canada and the provinces, they need to consult with us. Well, damn well, we need to consult too. So, so at the end of the day, our consultation has been always, uh, turns out to be so well received by our people. Of course, you can't talk to every citizen, but you give them the opportunity that's there to make sure they have a chance to be part of it. And if they want to join or listen or come virtual or, you know, come to an assembly or regional meetings or local meetings, there are so many venues that uh, we have organized in our democracy to make sure people are part of it. So I think that's why in Manitoba we're so united and so strong. And, you know, okay, of course, we can have an oddball and say negative things about the NMF, let them. Uh, that's part of the democracy. You know, you've got to let these people have their say and, and, and say uh, whatever they want to say. And uh, my job is to keep on building the government and keep on moving the government forward. So... Again, um, also had a good meeting with David Lametti. Uh, of course, he's the Minister of Justice. So people are asking who is David Lametti. He's the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. And, of course, I discussed the issue of bail reform. Uh, this is an issue that's really starting to uh, boil over in our communities. Our elders have been raising issues of concern. Uh, of course, we need a lot of uh, updates that are coming in uh, where uh, young, young boys and girls are busting into an elder's home, taking their pills away from them. Uh, you know, because the town wall trees and, and different, uh, I guess, addictive uh, pills. They get a, what do you call it, a hallucination. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and they go out and, and rob our elders. And, and, or else there's assaults that are happening in our villages. And by the time the police arrive, it's all said and done. The person's already been abused or broken into or whatever. Uh, they arrest the guy, uh, take him out, or, or the girl, take him out. Put them in, take them to jail for the night. Goes to court in the morning. They're walking in the community the next day. So our people are getting very sick of that because they're threatening them when they get out. Right. You go if you go to court. You know we're gonna we're gonna attack you. You're gonna pay a price. You know. So our elders are scared, and and so you know these people need to realize uh, you better not abuse our elders. You know the old days we take you take you to the back of the shed and take care of you, man. And uh, you know those days are no longer available to us, but. I sure you tell you I'd be part of that group going in the back shed taking care of them. <laughs> but it's, uh, no, it's just, uh, you never abuse an elder. No. And, women, and never abuse women, you know, like that's something my mom raised very strong in all of us. And, and uh, you know, that's it's so sad to see it happening. And that, uh, but they're stuck in drugs and drugs prevail. Uh, I guess they don't have the right mind in place and they don't realize how much damage and hurt they're doing to an elder and or to a family. The families are poor and hardworking and breaking into their houses, stealing their TVs and their stuff. And they save so much time and money to go and buy a TV for their kids. And next thing you know, it's broken and they steal it. And next day they're walking around the community. And the guy's saying, I should go pound the hell out of him, but I'll be charged for assault. You know, so so we got to figure out how do we change that. Bell reform needs to be more stricter. That's what our people are starting to tell us already, uh, that we need to make these people more accountable, including Métis uh, criminals that break the law. Like, don't trust me, I'm a big supporter of helping those uh, that are in prison right now in Stony Mountain or Eddingley. I've been pushing so hard to get jobs for them, to mm-hmm. create opportunities for them, to get a chance when they get out to have another chance at life, a better chance at life. A lot of them have kids and they have families, and they just made a bad turn. And uh, and they also got hooked on drugs, and they weren't in their right mind. Uh, so hopefully when they come out, they're not, no longer drug addicted, and that they want to change their life. If they want to change their life, the Federation will be there to help them. So... So that's something that um, my team works and believes in in my government. We, we, we care for them while they're in there because we believe uh, they made a mistake, but they need to be helped to get a better chance. So, But if you keep on making a mistake over and over and breaking into somebody's home next day and coming out next day and breaking the next day again or next week after, then something's got to change because that can't be allowed anymore. 
to be. So I had a good discussion with Lamedi over that issue, and we talked about UNDRIP, where uh, we need, there's a draft a document being worked on by a committee, and we had concerns about the Métis National Council being referenced. Uh, some of the First Nations are, are rarely referenced, but they're an organization. MNC is a corporation. They made it clear already that's what they are, a corporation, an organization. They're not a government. And yet they're mentioned all over UNDRIP. So we're saying, look, there's a problem with that. You don't mention ITK, you don't mention AFN, but why are you mentioning ANC all over? Right. Uh, ANC is, n- is nothing but a corporation. Openly said by the existing president that's there right now, that they're a corporation and they're an organization and they're not a government. So governments, it's the na- United Nations about exactly that, nations. It's about nation to nation, government to government, not corporation to nation you know, government or corporation to government. So that's not what that's all about. It's beyond that. It's much broader, much bigger. The context of discussions are much broader and bigger. So we can't let government uh, sneak in corporations and little organizations. That's what we need to talk to to deal with some of the pressing issues our people face today. So we, we spoke again on, on a variety of other matters with Umedi. Uh, so I think it was, uh, we, we talked about the, uh, uh, it's not under his watch, but he's still Minister of Justice. It's under Miller's watch. Uh, it's the, of course, the uh, new uh, uh, bill teacher, the one, I'll use that phrase, where they're allowing um, the uh, uh, First Nations who have taken treaty to withdraw their treaty status. Um, and, and, and they want then apply for their Métis citizenship card with the Red River, for example. Uh, but what we're concerned about is they can also opt back in. So our citizens are raising it, uh, uh, Bill C-38, I believe, and uh, so we're supporting for sure the bill, but we don't support the opting in and opting out. Uh, and I don't think First Nations leaders will support that either, and neither will I. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, uh, how can you plan as a government, plan as a leader, uh, the advancement of your people, advancement of issues, if, if you have a 1,000 people opting in, and all of a sudden 1,000 people opt out, or 10,000 people opt in, 10,000 people opt out. So so it affects the, your programs, your services, your, it affects your, your planning. So we'll, we've raised that with Miller, I've raised that with Lametti, and uh, saying, look, we support it, but with this clause causes us serious concern. So we will be pushing strong and watching over that and uh, continue to support the op- opting out if they want, but not opting back in. So that's something we will push very strong as we move forward. Uh, on another note, uh, I'm very proud to see Terry Smith's name. I was driving all the way here. i seen the little tiny signs, but uh, not as big as uh, uh, the... Uh, uh, so that is named the uh, uh, Leslie. That, uh, uh, yeah, Kat's telling you the name. I forgot the conservative candidate is Leslie. And uh, Maxim Bernier, the mm-hmm. wild man from Quebec, is here. So uh, so he's there with a few signs. So uh, it's good to see Kerry Smith. And for those that do not know Kerry Smith, she actually is one of our leads and director, executive directors or senior directors, a better phrase, is of our one of the biggest programs we had, which assisted thousands and thousands of people going back to school, getting jobs. Uh, she's been in the lead of that for so long. She came and approached us, and I said, look, I've been asked to run. It's, can, I, can I put my name forward, although I'm a senior director? Of course you can. You have the right to, to run in any election. And so she put her name forward, and uh, she's running in the Port list car. It's going to be a tough riding. It's always been a concerted riding. Uh, but she's so proud to be running as a, as a Métis woman and putting her name forward. She's running against uh, uh, two men, obviously, and the, the first battle they had right away was the two men were talking about women's, women's rights. Mm-hmm. Which is unbelievable. Yeah, they're talking about abortion. They're saying, you know, we need to change that. And, and Carrie's going to be saying, well, you don't have no right to tell women what to do with their bodies. That's their bodies. Right. And they're the ones that carry the baby for nine months, and, and they're the ones that go through whatever issue they have to go through. So you don't tell a woman what to do. A woman will decide to hurt themselves. So, so that's Carrie's already platform. She's already pushing that out there, and... Maxine Bernie is trying to say, I will tell a woman what to do with, uh, with their abortion. So I will make that choice. So uh, he's in the wrong damn province. I'll tell you, he's saying that. I, I, I'm not sure what Leslie's saying under the conservative rule, but uh, NDP, I'm sure, is clearly supporting also at the same time women have the right to protect and choose their own, over, over say, over their own bodies. Anyway, so let's go. Uh, uh, other writings, of course, uh, Ben Kerr is running in the city of Winnipeg. That's the late Jim Carr's son. He's running out there. Anybody wants to go, make sure... We go out to vote. Uh, we're pushing our people. Don't forget to go out and vote. And I'll be speaking at that in closing here today. There's a packed house and big families here, big Métis families in the Port of Star area. I'll be telling you, go out and vote. Uh, we vote for your damn business. I can't tell you to vote for. 
uh, we look at the policies and you decide who's, who's best for your native people and your family. So, anyways, uh, locals here today also, many, many leaders, I want to thank them for, you know, the decades and decades of volunteering and supporting and fighting at the local level to keep us going forward. And it just, just makes me so proud. It's been an ongoing uh, uh, a staple of our of our government, our democracy, and it's something that uh, I believe is such a, an important aspect. So I want to say some goodbyes before I go. I've got to head back into the room. Okay. Some local leaders want to meet me. Uh, but there's some people I want to I want to say hello to. Uh, of course, we had a engagement party. Uh, my wife has been going absolutely crazy. I hope she's listening. <laughs> she's worked, she worked running, getting the assembly at this 11th hour kind of thing, and planning for thousands and thousands of people is hard. It's a it's a I tell you, a task oh, and a half. I know. I uh, you know, to organize the hotels and every every piece of uh, of the conference to happen, every microphone, every television, where it goes. Every prize, every oh, just on and on and on. Where the elders sit, make sure the food is out, and yeah. it's a big, big task. So she's been going night and day, and she was just dragging her, herself. And I left yesterday because we had the day before we had an engagement between Derek Danielson and Candice. Um, so she uh, she's from South Indian, and Derek, of course, is from Cranberry. But they, Derek runs our wood project and uh, and does a lot of our community buildings now, our office buildings. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's uh, well known in the elders, known by name now everywhere, because he delivers the firewood along with Hilda Bushy, of course. And they uh, now serve nearly 400 families in firewood throughout the winter. That's uh, awesome. So, so Derek's well known out there. So I'm, I hope these people listening will say congratulations because they really like him out there. And he takes good care of our elders. So I hope they say hello to him and congratulations. So uh, uh, Candace's mom came all the way from South Indian, that's Delilah and Head and dad, and then, of course, his fa- her family, Dora and Dawn, they were so proud to be at the president's house and take pictures with the president, and it's a, such a big uh, honor for them to be part of it. Also, in uh, in closing, uh, greenhouses are coming up June 1st. We anticipate uh, the uh, uh, construction will commence by then. What's right now, of course, holding us back is roads restrictions, so I'll start all in gravel. It will be built in the... Uh, um, um, what do you call this place now? Trying to watch. Breezy, 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 breezy. <laughs> Anyways, breezy, breezy, breezy. That's where it's going to be built. The greenhouses will have two big, giant greenhouses. It's going to employ about 70 people through term seasonal jobs and uh, five permanent positions and, of course, probably security. Because uh, we plan to grow in the next 10 years. I mean, we plan to probably grow about, uh, I would say, um, four times 10, 50, 50 million trees. Wow. In, in the next uh, 10 years. In the next 50 years, of course, we're going to go 500 million trees. So you can tell the, the, the dent we're going to make in helping fight against carbon and green. Uh, green is going to be important for our next generation. So MMF is doing their part. In fact, right now we have 5,000 trees that are being planted as we speak, uh, even before our greenhouse are built. And we have 5,000 trees we're going to give away today at the assembly. Awesome. So this is all be- beautiful white spruce. And, uh, of course, we're also going to be growing fruit trees and all that in the paw. As we start construction, uh, the goal of the minister there is to actually grow fruit trees, fruit bushes, uh, in the complete block around the uh, houses and daycare centers that are being built in the paw. So a shout out is going out to Minister Janai and, and Minister Fleming with them. Uh, there, have, of course, his daughter works in this particular department uh, uh, and one of our top fiddlers. And, and I remember his kid fiddling, uh, Taylor Fleming. Yeah. He's getting engaged uh, also. And uh, that's going to happen on uh, May 27th, I believe. No, it's, today's May 27th. And no, 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 they're just pointing sticks. I'm supposed to read her mind here. She's putting <laughs> her pen all over the place here. So anyways, uh, uh, she's getting married soon. Uh, that uh, I think it happened already, engagement. Okay, okay. Now it now makes sense. So that scribbling does not make sense whatsoever. Anyways, uh, <laughs> she's getting married the week after the assembly. Oh. And, and so and, and so the Northwest is also holding an engagement event. Uh, so that's uh, something to be proud of. And Fran and her team and Richard and the rest and, and, and Fleming Peter are working diligently in that region. It's always busy. Every weekend there's something going on. And so my uh, sister, of course, uh, was the vice president there and and my brother was the vice president before. I said, take it easy, and we need to, you know, have you. You're pushing yourself too hard, and because uh, she's going every weekend, she's doing something. And I know that she loves she loves making people's lives change and for the better. But she's got to watch that she doesn't push herself to the extreme. Now, right. closing off next uh, next gospel tunes, I'll close off now with saying, 
please send it out to the um, I, I was just talking about her this morning. Uh, she's in a video in my presentation on treaty, and she's standing there with two youth, and I was so excited. I've seen her in Interlake region at the, the treaty consultation. She's so excited for June 34th. She's talking about being there, and she can't wait. And, and she, her name is Elma Zastri. She passed away uh, yesterday. And uh, so, again, our, our, uh, our, our condolences, our prayers go to her and her mom and, and the rest of the family. And uh, it's so sad to see you know, like just the excitement she had in there. Big, you know, she has such a such a friendly uh, position about her and her, her smile and everything. I just, I just so, so, so sad that we lo we lost her that she didn't get to see that uh, uh, on on the chance she had. Also, Michael uh, and, and Tarantin, Tarantino. I'll say I, I have a hard time with your name, Margaret. And Margaret, of course, is one of our elders, uh, and she just lost her son. Michael was actually working in the wood project for a while. And he got sick, and uh, he passed on, and uh, and it's got a shock uh, to to all of us. And uh, prayers go out to you, Margaret, and I hope you're listening out uh, in Canada. Also, the registration for EGA online. Just don't forget that uh, you can't make it. You still can register from home. You can register at the satellite offices. There's different places to go, but the deadline is Monday, May 29 at 4:30. So if you're going to join the assembly uh, of the historic meeting that's taking place, where you can. Just Say one day in history, the kids can say in history, the grandkids can say in history. My mom was there, my grandpa was there, my grandma was there, they voted. And that was when we changed in Canada, we changed the Constitution, reflected the 18 Treaty. So that'll be a history to make. And so I, again, uh, join May 29th, you know, 4 30 the cutoff, get a hold of MMF, get over your region to find out where where you need to get uh, uh, in place. Oh, and Knudsen is the name, Knudsen. Not, that's what somebody just texted me. Oh. I apologize to my next president <laughs> for 15 years from now. Okay, we'll talk to you, Naomi. Thanks for uh, always being there. And, Cowboy, thank you for finding me as usual. You're welcome. All right. My pleasure. Take thank care. you, guys. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.